to say that uh, my, my thoughts I had for tonight were um, mostly because of a song. Um, it was a, a song that uh, George Beverly Shea, I don't know if you remember, you know, he sang on the Billy Graham. And uh, he wrote, he also wrote this. And, and it, it's called The Wonder of It All. And uh, it says, there is the wonder of the sunset at evening, the wonder as sunrise I see, but the wonder of wonders that thrills my soul is the wonder that God loves me. Amen. I wonder that I, I wonder about that a lot of times when I'm I'm not too nice. <laughs> Don't ask Ron. Uh, <laughs> oh, the wonder of it all, the wonder of it all. Just think that God loves me. Oh, the wonder of it all, the wonder of it all, just to think that God loves me. I began to think uh, about different scriptures that were wonders. And uh, I looked it up in the Bible dictionary and it said, uh, wonders and miracles have the same meaning. So uh, anyway, we're, we're going to go with this, and uh, I'm going to use miracle pretty often. And uh, I want to start with uh, the story of creation and, uh, the, uh, and, the, uh, and the scripture on that. Um, yeah, if I can read my writing. <laughs> oh, no, I don't even have it wrote down. But, but anyway, it's the creation story. So that's the scripture for us. and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light then it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, so the evening and the morning were the second day. Then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seeds, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit, according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. 
and the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yielded seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. I, I th think, you know, when we think of, of the creation and, uh, and how, how perfectly uh, God did everything, you know, just by speaking the word, which reminds us of how, how powerful our God is. Yeah. And, uh, and anyway, uh, as, as, he, as he created the different things, and, and, and his creation of man uh, was... Uh, uh, you know, such such a great miracle. And uh, anyway, when you think of mankind and and how God created us, and I was thinking, from the top of your head, we have a brain, and he covered it with a skull. And then you come down, your ears so you can hear, your nose so you can smell, your mouth so that you can taste and talk, and a whole lot of things, you know, and, and, and God just did this so wonderful. And uh, then there was the creation of, of all of the trees and the herbs and, and, and everything, and then the creation of mankind. And I was like, oh, you know, always said about that, but I thought it was so neat as I was reading over this, that um, God made the, the herbs and the trees and everything so that when he created us, we'd have something to eat. I mean, you know, God, God always thought ahead, you know, in every way. He, he, he thought ahead as everything that uh, he was doing. And uh, then I was thinking about Moses and uh, the, uh, the miracle of Moses' survival as a baby, because you know the story, you know, all, all the newborn baby boys were thrown into the river you know, and because uh, the uh, the Pharaoh was trying to get get rid of the uh, the Israelites, and so this was his way of of doing it. And then how his mother built his little uh, basket or boat or whatever it was, and how God arranged it all that uh, that the uh, the Pharaoh's daughter would find that and take him and rescue him. So God, God had a special mission for Moses, and there was nothing that was going to stand in the way of that, because God, God uh, uh, always plans ahead. And so, and then we think, you know, of Moses. Um, you know, most of the. Um, of the uh, uh, people that God chose were ordinary people. I mean, you know, if you think about it, you think so many of them were shepherds or, um, you know, uh, fishermen and, and all that. He chose ordinary people. And I think this is a lesson for us because, you, you know, uh, I mean, even me being up here, I thought, I, I, you know, I, I, just, I just shouldn't be up here. But anyway, I uh, reminded myself that what God uh, uh, always used ordinary people, so uh, I would try to do my best for you. Ordinary <laughs> <laughs> people. So, and so then uh, I, I, would, I went pretty far, you know, and, and was thinking too over the, the miracle of the, of the parting of the Red Sea. You know, um, the Israelites were, they were set free by the Pharaoh, and, and yet after they got started and they got to the Red Sea, here was the Red Sea in, in, in front of them, and behind them was the, uh, the Pharaoh and his army uh, coming to take them back and make them go back as slaves. And so God just opened up the Red Sea and the Israelites walked across on dry land. And then, uh, here comes Pharaoh's army, and they're going to go across the Red Sea uh, to capture them. 
and, and God left the, the waters of the Red Sea go up and they all were drowned. And so uh, God doesn't let anything stand in his way of, of doing uh, what he has planned for us. And then I'd like to go on to the, uh, the miracle of the walls of Jericho falling down. You realize how, you know, those instructions, you know, seven days you go around one time. Seven days. And so they did that. And I mean, I was thinking, oh, I would probably say, this is stupid, I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but it was God's plan, and uh, he knew what he was doing, and then and you know the story. Uh, the seventh day, they went around seven times, and the walls fell down. They didn't have to battle the people or anything. God took care of it all. And uh, how, how this just reminds us that, you know, we have problems, and uh, we just, you know, sometimes get a little bit discouraged. But, but God has a plan. Yes. God has a plan, yes. you know. And, and if, uh, if we can have enough patience to wait for it. Yeah, but you know, we, we want something, we want it now, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to wait. So, but uh, anyway, and then there was the, this, uh, the story of Noah, Noah, Noah uh, building the ark. Now, Noah was no carpenter. He was not a carpenter, he was a shepherd. And, uh, and, but God gave him the instructions and Noah built the ark. And, and then, uh, you know, it saved, uh, what was it, eight people? Eight people uh, got on the ark with all those animals. Can you imagine how terrible it was? <laughs> we went amongst all those animals. <laughs> I hold my nose to think about it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, God was taking care of his people again. And uh, so anyway, uh, it just, uh, it, it's just amazing what God does. And, uh, you know, like I said, that Noah wasn't a carpenter, but if God says do it, then you better do it. And then I was thinking about um, some, some of the miracles in the New Testament. And you know, this, this book here, this Bible, it is filled with, with miracles and wonders and, and all those things, you know. But uh, the, the first miracle that I was thinking of was Mary's virgin birth. Never happened before, and it never happened since that. And, uh, but anyway, uh, that, was, that was the way that Jesus came into the world. You know, he didn't, he didn't come in as a king, but he's going to go out as a king. Yeah. And, uh, but, but anyway, uh, and then there was the place of his birth, all predicted way back in the Old Testament, that uh, he was going to be born in a stable, and uh, that uh, there would be shepherd and wise men come. And, and, and just as the uh, scripture said it, why uh, that was, uh, that's the way it was. And uh, let's see. Okay, and uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the miracle of Paul's conversion. You know, he he was uh, he, he, he was on uh, a rage, uh, hating Christians. And I think we have the, I think we have that scripture. Do we? Um, I can put it in, Emma. Do you have it written down? I gave the slip back there. Yeah. So, I just have Genesis 1 through 12, which we already went through, and Genesis 2, 7, and 9. That's all that's on the slip here. Oh, okay. Well, a a anyway, um, uh, you know, like I said, Jesus' uh, uh, birth 
And uh, Acts 8. Acts 8. Okay. Oh, here's. Boy, oh boy, I can't even read my own notes. Now Saul was consenting to his death. Now that, that was that was talking uh, about the uh, uh, the people that were being uh, executed, and uh, he he was consenting to it. As a matter of fact, he was very happy to do it. At that time, a great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles, the, uh, the apostles of remain. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. Anyway, uh, uh, Paul, as you remember, uh, the light shone from heaven, and a voice spoke to him, and uh, and, and uh, then he accepted the Lord, and he became one of the greatest apostles that there there ever were, you know, and and uh, so anyway. Uh, there again, you know, God uses whoever he wants to use uh, to get his work done. These are terrible moments. <laughs> you were up there. There was a, there was something here that I missed from the Old Testament, and that was a, the miracle of Joseph's life. You remember um, Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery. Uh, he was in jail. Uh, he suffered many things uh, because uh, of his of his life. And uh, you know, sometimes we wonder why why good people suffer. And we we don't we don't have any idea. We don't have we don't have any answer uh, when, when we see good people suffering, and uh, we don't don't understand why. But we remember that God always has a purpose in everything that He does in our life. And uh, uh, so anyway, I uh, I was thinking, you know, I had I had uh, cancer three times, and. Uh, I, the first time, uh, they didn't expect that I was going to live. Well, then uh, I had uh, I had some surgery. I guess that was is that two years ago. I guess it was, and uh, I had a, a tumor, an abdominal tumor. Uh, it was as large as a football, and. Uh, Anyway, my doctor came to me before he did the surgery, and he said, Emma, you have a very slim chance of living through your surgery. Mm -hmm. But he said, you cannot live with it with the way that it is. And I said, I feel like I'm in a win-win situation. <laughs> and he's looking at me like I was from outer space or something, you know. And he said, what do you mean by that? And I said, well, if I die, I go to be with my Lord. If I live, I get to have more time with my family and friends. Amen. He said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, 
and anyway, uh, I don't, I don't really, I don't know really why God there again, why, why He spared my life, but but He did, and um, I, uh, I I used to do a lot of a lot of things in the church, and uh, I taught Sunday school, I preached, and one time I I even gave communion. And that was an absolute no-no in the Methodist Church. <laughs> but we were all set up for communion, and, and Ron got an emergency call to go to the hospital with somebody seriously ill in the hospital. So there sets that, you know, what am I going to do? You know, so uh, I, uh, I preached and, I, and then I gave him communion. And uh, a preacher friend of ours, he said, Emma, that is it. That's against the law in the Methodist Church. <laughs> Too bad. It's over and done. <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, it's just, uh, you know, like I said, and uh, it's, it, it just amazes me. It really does amaze me. I just, uh, I, I, I just, you know, get excited whenever I think of, of uh, all the wonderful things that God does. Not only for me, but uh, for my my family, my friends, and all those things, you know. So, and uh, I was thinking about Ron's sister that died two weeks ago, and uh, she uh, she had uh, pancreatic cancer. And uh, she suffered terrible, terrible, you know. And uh, I thought, God, why, why are you letting her suffer like this, you know? And she was in constant pain. She, she couldn't eat anymore. And she would take some ice chips from time to time. And then she thought she wouldn't even take them. And this one day, the one nurse talked her into drinking some chicken broth. Mm -hmm. And she drank that and it just, you know, just came up, you know, and I thought, you know, why? And I don't know why. I don't know why this happened with her. But I know that God had a reason, I, you know. And so uh, hopefully uh, maybe her life uh, would be a blessing to somebody else as they thought about it and the way that she handled it. So uh, anyway, and then, um, it, uh, then there's the... The, the miracle of Jesus' resurrection. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there again, nothing like that had ever happened before. And now, uh, now Jesus did raise Lazarus from the dead, you know. But the way that, that the, with the crucifixion and the way that they cut a hole in his side, you know, and everything, that, that, was, just, that was just so amazing. You know that that he was raised from the dead, but that's the way um, that's the way that uh, God planned it. And uh, as we think about that, we realize that this miracle is coming when he's going to be resurrected. Amen. Yeah, you know, and and what what it's going to mean to all of us when he's when he's re resurrected. And. Uh, I don't know if I'll be here for that or not, but one way or another, uh, you know, the dead in Christ have a part in the resurrection, you know, so, <laughs> so, so, so hopefully, you know, that will do that. So anyway, that's, that's what I have for you. And,